Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, may I please kindly ask you to take your seats. We are ready for the next panel coming up. And this one will be quite interesting. Actually, it will be Business Leaders Roundtable. So we will have real world views from business leaders who have invested in Ukraine. I want to kindly call our speakers Founder and President of CEO Club Ukraine, Mr. Sahi Haidachuk. Founder of Medis, Founder of Petri, Vladimir Reshetov. CEO and Founder of Biosphere Corporation, Andriy Desenko. Studio Park, Chairman of the Board of Directors, Vadim Gurzos. Managing Partner and President of PJSC, Toronto, Kiev, Yuri. HD Group, U Parks Ukraine co founder Boris Shestopalo, excuse me if I'm mispronouncing the names, hopefully. And for our moderator, I will call honor, honorary, Honorable Olina Yanchenko, member of Ukrainian Parliament and Secretary of the National Investment Council of Ukraine. And to do the opening speech, I will call Deputy Chairman of the Board of Directors of Doge Holding, Mr. Husna Akan, but he has a flight to catch, so after his speech, he will be not with us, unfortunately. So first of all, I want to leave the stage to him. Hello, welcome. Well, I would like to welcome you all, first of all, to Turkey and to Istanbul, beautiful city of Istanbul. And also, I would like to thank to the organizers to set up this forum and invite me to address to the distinguished audience. Uh, if I may, I would like to start to talk about, very shortly about Doge Group, who Doge Group is. Doge Group is the third conglomerate of Turkey, uh, third biggest conglomerate of Turkey, and the, the Doge Group was set up in 1951 as the construction company. And since then, we have been active in different areas like the automotive, the tourism, hospitality, retail, media, real estate, construction, and energy sectors. Uh, Doge Group has more than 300 companies uh, and with more than 20,000 staffs all over the world in 21 countries with 200 locations. And uh, the uh, end of this year, we're going to have some six and a half billion dollars revenue with the nine million euros EBITDA. Uh, Doge Group, in uh, short, the uh, automotive, we are the exclusive distributor of the Volkswagen and Audi cars and also all the branded cars under the Volkswagen uh, umbrella like Seat, Skoda, Porsche, Bentley, Lamborghini and Scania trucks as well. And the hospitality and retail part, uh, we have 13 hotels in Turkey and abroad. And also we have in the FMB business, we have more than 200 restaurants all over the world. Maybe you might know all the uh, famous brands like Zuma, like uh, Roca, Koya, Amazonica, Sun, and also Nusret like this. And also we have the retail group here in Turkey. We are the exclusive distributor of Laura Piana, Under Armour, and Kiko. When I come to the Doge construction, which we have been in uh, existence in Ukraine for the last 18 years, and Doge group, as I said, was set up as the construction company in 1951. And since then, we have completed 250 mega infrastructure and superstructure projects uh, with the value of $28.5 billion in, not only in Turkey, but also some other neighboring countries as well. Uh, we are active in the Middle East, North Africa, and the southeastern part of uh, Europe and we are trying to have some other uh, region to active in the construction areas, not only the, uh, just to transfer our expertise and know-how in the infrastructure projects like the tunneling, the uh, seaports, airports, the dam projects, metro projects as such, as such and also the superstructure projects as well. 
So far, we have completed more than 1,500 kilometers roads, so almost 50 kilometers of bridges and viaducts, and uh, more than over uh, 340 kilometers subways, railways, and tunnels. And also, we have completed 21 dam and hydroelectric power plant projects in Turkey and abroad, and 45 million square meters of the uh, uh, superstructure buildings. And uh, when I look at the Doge construction activities in Ukraine, uh, in the last 18 years, we have completed three major projects in uh, Ukraine. The first one was the Darnitsa Bridge in Kiev on the Dnieper River, and then the project value was $110 million. And it is a railway and highway bridge, as you may know, and it is the six highway lanes and the two railway gorges. The uh, length of the bridge, 1,066 meter, and the width of the bridge was, uh, is 40 million. And the, uh, when we look at the estimated traffic capacity of the, of the bridge, it is 60,000 60, cars per 24 hours and 120 trains in each direction for 24 hours. And the second project was uh, slightly on scale, small one, Zaporozhye Wastewater Treatment Plant Reconstruction, and the project value was $14 million. Uh, the other project which we are proud of is the Borispol International Airport Ter Terminal D, and the project value was $443 million. And it was the airport development project, as I said, and the 100,000 100, square meter terminal building, and also the 200,000 square meter, the uh, APROM, uh, APROM building. And currently, we are constructing a cable state bridge project in Kremenchuk city of Ukraine. Even though the war started, we fully keep our staff for the project and also full missionary park in the Kremenchuk city. We hope the situation is going to get better and also we would like to resume our project as soon as possible. Because Ukraine is a very important country for us, for Doge, and we have existence, as I said, in, in the country for 18 years and we would like to stay more and we are strongly willing to continue our activities uh, after the war as well. And we would like to uh, support in rebuilding the country in the coming years. Uh, normally, I can say that the Ukraine has challenging market conditions for international contractors. Therefore, you may not find a lot of international contractor in the country. But the Wish Construction Company is the unique contractor, one of the unique contractors who could manage to merge the international contractor standards with the uh, local expertise in Ukraine. Beginning from the 24th of February, we are closely, very closely following the situation in Ukraine. We have very deep pain and sorrow about the situation and trying to give all support that we can. We are keeping, first of all, all our staff related with our uh, project. We did not fire any staff of the project, uh, either uh, the Turkish ones or the Ukrainian ones. And uh, we are supporting, we're still supporting the Ukrainian staff and their families. We are hosting wives, kids, and relatives of our Ukrainian staff in our hotels in Turkey. Currently, there are 70 people with us, and we will look after them until the situation gets stable in Ukraine. As we all notice that the impact of the Russian invasion or, and the war affected not only the uh, region, but also all over the world. Energy and commodity prices are getting higher. A lot of governments increasing their military budget, also global food crisis is expected. Even though just the further development 
we are expecting that uh, some of the European countries, maybe including the USA, is going to experience the recession or stagflation as well. We hope that the stagflation will not be the case for the countries because otherwise we can see some of the countries is going to go deeply the depression in their economies and then it will have another uh, so much impact, negative impact for the, for the other countries as well. Uh, and uh, as uh, just to sum up, I would like to uh, mention about our construction activities once again that the in rebuild, rebuilding or reconstructing projects uh, in Ukraine we would like to be take part of it uh, very actively and then we will continue to support uh, to give our support and help to Ukrainian friends and Ukrainian brothers and also the, well, uh, I hope that the uh, this forum will be much as much productive as uh, it was in the uh, obviously the morning sessions uh, for tomorrow as well and thank you very much for listening to me thank you thank you very much mr Khan. safe travels so i will hand over the microphone to mr Thank you, Mr. Ahan, especially thanks for your social responsibility and for the fact that you keep all the employees, it's very important. And we are honored to be joined by Andriy Zdesenko, who is the owner of uh, Biosphere Corporation. The headquarter is in Dnipro, and, um, and actually, we can actually start our great panel discussion. I was waiting for this panel discussion for the whole day, because over here, we will talk with the true Ukrainian uh, business leaders, I would even say economic elites, but today I would even say economic heroes of Ukraine. Of uh, All of these great gentlemen are owners or CEO of uh, largest Ukrainian uh, businesses. All of them have started their businesses from the scratch, basically without any specific help from the state or, you know, they did not inherit it. So these are totally self-made men. And I am very happy to be uh, moderating uh, this panel discussion. The final note I want to, uh, to share with you before we actually start is that uh, Ukrainian uh, business community is a very special community. They are very flexible. They are very creative, they are reformers, and in some cases I would say uh, they even do some revolution in very positive meaning of this word. Uh, for example, a lot of uh, our panelists mentioned uh, so-called uh, mobile application, uh, state mobile application, DIA, where Ukrainian can uh, find the electronic passports, electronic COVID certificates, electronic taxi drivers, but not uh, that many people know that this state mobile application was inspired, state was inspired by Ukrainian private sector. Uh, we have uh, a bank called Private Bank, and they had an application called Private 24. They made a revolution in Ukrainian banking. They made each client basically a, a banker for himself. Any client could receive any bank um, service with their mobile application. And we were inspired. We as politicians, before the presidential elections, were inspired by that experience of private sector. And we decided that we want to have so-called State 24 or Derzhava 24. And that's how DIA appeared. And so now we definitely, we as state stakeholders, definitely have... Uh, something to learn from our economic heroes, our economic elite, and I'm very honored to actually pass the floor to this gentleman. And I would uh, like to start this panel discussion with uh, giving a floor to uh, Sergei Gaidachuk. He is a founder of SEO Club, uh, which unites uh, 230 members. They are owners or CEO of the biggest Ukrainian businesses, also some foreign businesses who operate in Ukraine, and they are a true community who are helping each other, exchanging information, who are starting common uh, businesses. So, uh, Sergei, please share some uh, 
I don't know, experience or impressions of owners of your club as well as how your club is operating. How are you helping each other now in this uh, specific circumstances? Please. Thank you. Thank you, Helena. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I would like to start uh, by thanking uh, our colleagues uh, for organizing this event, as far as uh, thanking for Turkish people for supporting Ukraine in this difficult time. As Helena mentioned, uh, I represent uh, one of the biggest Ukrainian business communities, uh, consist of uh, leaders. Uh, they are owners and CEOs of different uh, largest and medium-sized companies from different spheres. Since the war started, uh, it uh, was uh, 24th of February, our whole community, uh, they are 230 members, turned into a separate army, I would say. We united our resources, uh, our expertise, our energy, everything what we had into uh, a business army. We divided ourselves uh, into different uh, groups. Uh, each group of our member is responsible for uh, its specific area of work, such as uh, fundraising, logistic, procurement, uh, PR and cyber operations, uh, uh, evacuation support, uh, etc. And we, uh, we have been uh, uh, operating until now. Uh, as a community, we decided and continue to solve hundreds and thousands very important uh, problems and issues supporting our army, our nation, uh, and our civilians. Uh, from the, uh, since the war started, we uh, raised and collected among our members more than $30 million, and all this money was sent for purchasing different equipments for uh, our army. Uh, but uh, what kind of uh, lessons I would like to share with you, what I learned from these uh, uh, difficult times. Uh, so first, uh, all the lessons about people. Uh, first lesson that uh, social capital, trusted network, communities of peers are playing a critical role of surviving in such difficult times. Uh, when a disaster strikes and uh, all state institutions are paralyzed, when rockets and bombs fly, you have no time to uh, you have no time for anything. You have to survive and save yourself, your loved ones, your teams, and if possible, your uh, businesses. Uh, and um, our community played a very important role in this surviving because uh, 230 leaders uh, uh, united uh, all the forces into one bank, into one mega brain, I would say, and we supported each other every day, 24 hours per, per day. And uh, we supported our country. Second, uh, what I learned, uh, it's uh, overestimation of people from uh, my social circles. It is only during such uh, tough times, uh, like a war, where uh, death awaits for you at every corner, you can really see who is who. Who does what and uh, how they behave. Uh, you see through everyone. Uh, who really has the uh, right values and who is a real leader. Uh, war is the most effective formation, uh, training of all that exists. Uh, war provides a unique opportunity to clean up your teams, your social environment, and create the most powerful team. And the third lesson, care and support uh, of others. Care and support of others in such difficult uh, moments lays uh, a great foundation for the future because people, uh, uh, people are the most valuable entity. And uh, if you are, as a leader, in difficult times, demonstrate uh, sincere care for people and show them their importance, uh, they will appreciate it. And it really uh, built a strong foundation of your leadership 
of your trust and uh, foundation for your business for many years to come. People see everything and uh, they will appreciate it. Take care of people uh, in the first place. So everything around people. Because uh, when the crisis, when the catastrophe, you can't take uh, on, you can't, uh, uh, you can't get support from institutions, from traditional resources, etc. You just uh, can't on your colleagues, uh, on the relationship you built before, and this is the most uh, important uh, lesson I learned from from this war. And uh, I have three reasons uh, why why to invest uh, in Ukraine. And uh, uh, all these uh, reasons uh, uh, are not so uh, concrete things. Uh, it's not uh, projects uh, or different economic data. But precisely, uh, I would like to share about invisible things, invisible things that created the Ukrainian nation today. And those invisible things, uh, I believe, uh, will become uh, uh, the foundation of the future Ukrainian economic development. So why Ukraine will be a very attractive country for investments after the war? First, the huge erased spirit of the Ukrainian nation. This is the enormous energy of the unity and spirit of the entire nation, which 100% will be transformed into a powerful fuel and driver for the further rapid development of our economy. Uh, it is difficult to pass the level uh, of this energy and this spirit and hope uh, we have today in Ukraine. Second, self-belief. Uh, this is very important, but we started to believe in ourselves as a country, as a nation. And you know that faith, faith is the most powerful driver of any change, uh, but not less important in the in the fact that we began to trust each other, including our government. The level of trust in the uh, society increased significantly today. And now we want to prove the whole, uh, to the whole world that Ukraine in business and economy will be able to surprise the world no less than on the battlefield. And third, Ukraine is a great global startup today. The whole world will invest in Ukraine and it will become, become a unique planetary startup that will be able to earn, I would say, hundreds and thousands of percent of profitability in a short period of time. But in order to make such a money when the war is over, you need to start now. Let's be friends, let's form partnership now, and let's create more benefits, not only for ourselves, but for the society around us. Let's start now. Thank you. Our next economic super, superman will be Andres Desenko. Um, how can I present this great guy? Probably uh, with the fact that they are dominating Ukrainian market in the uh, topic of hygiene products and uh, domestic chemicals, if we can say so, in, in Ukrainian. Hygienic cosmetic goods and household goods, house cleaning goods, but oh. not only in Ukraine. What a perfect countries. English. Give a round of applause to this gentleman, please. No, no. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Andrei's company has four uh, factories in Ukraine, and, and that's probably what really helped them to go through this crisis and go through the challenges. But uh, the heart of their production was in Dnipro. So, Andrei, I want to ask you a question. What were your strategies 
uh, how did you make this crisis uh, management and probably um, give some lessons learned. I guess we all have a lot uh, to learn from, from your experience because if you could survive through those challenges that you faced, you can probably survive through anything and you can probably build any kind of business in any country in the world. So please share your experience, crisis management, and maybe some recommendations whether you would advise to invest in Ukraine or not. If so, when and what sectors and stuff like that. Please, the floor is yours. Helena, thank you. Thank you, audience, for the support and the very positive uh, vibes and smiles and energy because uh, for Ukrainians it's very important. Not only, you know, tangible support, it's the also the human support. It's very important and it's really in big inspiration for everybody on this stage. Um, frankly speaking, this crisis, this war, this, this the horrible time is not the first time which we, you know, challenging us. Uh, before it was two years of, uh, of COVID time and uh, it was the big challenge for us, but it challenged uh, give us the strength and the ability, you know, to to protect the uh, the, the crisis and to, to be effective even with very in a difficult time. And uh, what is the, the big challenge now for the for the production, for the producers, for the industry in Ukraine? And I can say that uh, all our production, all, all our full production in Ukraine, even in Dnipro, when we have the biggest hub, the biggest cluster, production cluster, is working 24 hours. Just we have a make a break if uh, the, the rocket's alarm and, uh, you know, this... Uh, uh, this this expectation of of the dangerous situation, and when the, when the people that all employees need to go to the bomb shelters, of course it's the make the, the big influence of the efficiency. But despite of that, we are able to produce uh, quality product and deliver the whole territory in Ukraine. And uh, the also we have the, our recycling plant and the second plant in the western Ukraine. And what we do now, we split our factories uh, to decrease the risk. It you know, takes a lot of investment. And uh, also the question of the people, of their readiness to, to move to other, other cities in Ukraine, to stay there with the families. And uh, also we have a big challenge because the, the many of our employees now stay abroad of Ukraine. But we have a very strong uh, bridge, professional bridge, and with the steel one company. Uh, before the war, we sell like uh, more than one million goods every day in the 30 countries. And now what we see that we are still effective because we have a modern investment and we have uh, the good facilities, uh, you know, to be competitive and to sell uh, this product uh, abroad of Ukraine. And like a uh, the potential uh, partner, I completely agree with uh, Sergey, that now is there really a risk to invest in Ukraine for new facilities because, you know, it's the question of investment, of the financing, how to find the right people. But it's the good time for you to find in Ukraine in the good partner, the good industry. Because when the war finished, when we will win, you know, I'm sure that our industry and our consumption, the people will come, the customer will come, will be grow very, very fast. And to be in the same time in, 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 in the future, together with the strong companies, with this leader of industry, to understand now what kind of industry we will develop and grow and will be more profitable and attractive, it's, you know, it's the time to discuss right now. Not, no, not to postpone this investment, not postpone the future, not postpone, you know, the, uh, the this this important important project. Uh, that's why what we do right now, we are, we, are, we are working. We would like to be efficient. It's you know we we, we now do many revolution, not outside the company, inside the company. We change the structure. We uh, uh, we do many many changes, uh, we move the equipment uh, to the Western Ukraine and, and also we would like, you know, to bring some, some investment abroad to Ukraine to be more effective. But 
we are we are looking for the future. You we we will see what kind of product, not only in household and hygienic, also maybe is uh, innovative food industry will be important or other industry which will really need our country to 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 the future customer. This is the main main approach and uh, what I what is my what is my dream, what is we expect, what we hope, then that in the this tea of our country with that a lot of innovative uh, industries uh, like in Turkey because uh, in Turkey is very innovative country with a lot of leading companies in many sectors. And uh, I think the joint ventures with Ukrainian company will be the, the unique chance to grow together and to develop the new Ukraine. This is my this is my dream. What I see and what what I invite for the future together. Many thanks for your thoughts. Um, earlier during this forum, we discussed uh, we discussed that um, agriculture processing is the future, and we, it will uh, give a lot of benefits to those who will do it. But our next panelist already is in this business for many years, uh, Mr. Boris Shestopalov, or should I call you Doctor uh, Shestopalov? Because our next panelist has PhD in in economics. He is also a vice president of uh, Association of Bakers of Ukraine, um, a member of board of flour mills of Ukraine, and he makes, well, his company makes, maybe he also makes, but uh, no one knows about that, but he makes very delicious cakes and cheesecakes. So if you ever come to Ukraine and stop by a gas station, ask uh, a lady in the counter for a cheesecake, and you know that... This is the cheesecake that Boris Companies is producing. Please. <laughs> Thank you very much for these presentations. Um, um, now our company <laughs> looks a little bit different than before 24 February. Because uh, after the 24 of February, our peaceful company uh, one day um, start to work like a part of critical infrastructure in, in Ukraine because uh, our factory produce uh, bread, uh, flour, um, different type of uh, flakes, uh, crops, and uh, now we produce uh, more easy products than before the war. And of course, we continue to produce a ready meal and frozen cheesecake, what is lovely our clients in petrol stations in Ukraine. But now we must produce more easy products. We reduce our uh, portfolio, our product portfolio, because now uh, main of our clients, it's a not a chain of shops or modern trade. It's... Uh, civil uh, administration, civil war administrations, it's army, uh, international humanitarian uh, organizations like United Nations, old uh, world food program. And uh, now we're responsible about uh, a lot of people for delivery with very easy, very easy products. Before the uh, war, we have uh, different 15 enterprises in everywhere in Ukraine from East to the West. Uh, during the start, to, after the start of war, we lost three our factory in uh, south east of Ukraine, in the city of Berdyansk, uh, Kherson, and uh, Melitopol. And uh, one of our factory completely destroyed in the city of Orechov because it's completely uh, line of the battle. And uh, after the eleven. 11 arrived of rockets, uh, our factory is destroyed completely. And uh, now we relocations, part of our equipment, relocations, part of our business, and continue to work. Of course, we continue to work. We uh, continue to develop part of our business. Of course, we must decrease our uh, plans uh, for the strategic development. And uh, now we must think about 
plans for the one month, not for the one year or more. Uh, but we start to we uh, come back to the export market because uh, part of our products usually we uh, sell in uh, Europe, in the uh, Middle East. It's first of all it's uh, confectionery products, it's different type of uh, syrups, toppings, and uh, ready meal, frozen first of all. And uh, now we continue to export, but of course we uh, feel all the problem with the uh, stock in the logistics corridor and price of the logistics. It's uh, uh, another new experience for us. And uh, we must to stay more efficiently than before. We must to think about uh, OPEX uh, every day because now uh, turnover and, uh, and money, it's like a bloody in the system of our company. But uh, like I said before, we still live, we continue to work. We start to develop our project, what we frozen uh, with, this, with the war. And uh, we hope when they return, of course, our city and our factory, we rebuild our factory and uh, more concentrate to uh, new products uh, because uh, like I talked in our presentations before, now we concentrate uh, for the new type of business like agri-food tech business with uh, more knowledge, more R&D in the product. And uh, I think like uh, Andrew talked before, uh, we a very good uh, platform, Ukrainian business, very good platform for the start new business, new generation of business, and a uh, very good uh, time for start uh, build new type of cooperations. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Boris. Uh, our next panelist is Yuri Krivoshaya, who is uh, a managing partner at a company called uh, Toronto Kyiv. They are owning a lot of real estate, including offices, retail spaces, and restaurants uh, in Ukraine. Uh, but also, he is um, a co owner or uh, partner of uh, the largest e commerce company in Ukraine called Yakabu. Um, Yuri, can you share your experience, how you managed to, uh, with some internal crisis in your companies and overall and uh, do you build any new types of cooperation in with ukrainian companies or with foreign companies what are some of your advices thank you um first of all i'd like to thank uh, for everybody else to be here because today is incredibly important you know for for us to get any type of support and collaboration and galina also thank you because i think all of us are honored here to have such a moderator uh, because it's all about teamwork uh, coming back to you know personal cases uh, every company uh, had a little bit different case in terms of the crisis that started with a full-scale invasion starting from the 24th of uh, February. Uh, in a real estate business, um, uh, basically uh, taking consideration that all responsible business is playing a significant role today in helping to defend our country in all ways possible, some of which already have been stated, but maybe even uh, deeper. Uh, some of the premises were not, let's put it this way, for commercial use. They've been used for uh, what's needed for defense purposes. Uh, and uh, the only tenants, for instance, that were working in the beginning, they were uh, supplying uh, food to the army, territorial defense, and for humanitarian needs. So therefore, that means that you have zero revenues, not zero income, you have zero revenues. And from another uh, side of the balance sheet, all obligations, responsibilities, financial responsibilities remain the same. So basically you have to find the ways how to do balance in this situation and you have to make priorities to when, for instance, you have figuratively speaking, you know, $1,000 to pay and you have $10 to do that. But you make choices and some of the choices I think have been voiced today already. You focus on people because uh, support of the team, uh, some, some members of which actually lost everything they had because of the Russian attacks, 
you focus on helping people. And actually jump forward uh, to today, we've been able gradually, slowly to rejuvenate you know, a lot of premises. We relaunched a lot of things. Some of the tenants came back. The hotel started to work again. Uh, so step by step, and, and, and the team really appreciates because some of the members of the team had concrete offers to stay outside of the country in a safe environment with a good salaries, but they made uh, objective or subjective whatever choice to come back. So this type of bonds, this type of positive energy, that sets fundamentals for long growth. In terms of e-commerce company that was mentioned, we have been the largest um, uh, market leader actually in Ukraine in our uh, segment uh, with a vertically integrated business and transforming to omnichannel uh, platform uh, and you know having you know a lot of employees and having more than three million uh, customers and of course when things became uh, pretty severe starting from February 24th you have again zero revenues but you make choices what do you do in addition to supporting the team uh, we for example have our own application which allows access to electronic content books to to the clients so we opened that up for free and starting from the 24th of february until like let's say june we had actually exponential growth in users up to 600,000 users we had uh, a lot of uh, thank yous from uh, from the army, from refugees, from everybody, because it was a chance for them to uh, switch their mind, to uh, help not only in terms of mental health, but to continue to get a uh, piece of culture, piece of literature in, in, in their language, in Ukrainian language, and, and, and to keep on going every day. And as of today, uh, as our policy, every problem we treat as a challenge which has to be solved, we actually started to develop further. We now launched international expansion. It's at early stage, but we did that. And um, our goal is to continue to build on those lessons learned on the positive feedback and see what strategies we can build in order to reach even you know, greater success. Of course, uh, support and everything is needed because, again, everything is a matter of teamwork. But I think the good fundamentals are being set there. Another thing, since uh, all of us are involved in a lot of different directions, uh, not only humanitarian, but other means, um, you know, the, the war speeds things up and, and really shows who is who. And uh, I think it has been, you know, very clear that business all of us have showed how efficiently it's possible to unite very quickly and to produce concrete solutions to concrete tasks that are even needed for the army or needed for humanitarian purposes quicker than other counterparties could, can do that and um, we will continue to do this and we will not wait but of course the more support uh, we can get the more benefits every single stakeholder will will receive and I, I, according to that, I would like to say that uh, why it is a good time to invest right now in Ukraine, it, it's not only because there is a potential for first mover advantage again, because new market rules are being formed right now, because all the business is united and becoming a true subject. It, it's also, if you try to look at the whole situation, uh, not only from a local perspective, but from a global perspective. So I would like to state a uh, like few theses that uh, to invest into Ukraine is actually very profitable and can be very beneficial for everybody. Uh, why? Because of several reasons. One reason is, let's say, global macroeconomics. Again, the World Bank decreased uh, in June uh, the growth of GDP from 4.1% uh, to 2.9% uh, because of many factors. But inflationary you know, pressures or energy prices or you know, uh, threat of hunger among the reasons. But I must tell you that uh, in, in economy, uh, not all the effects of the war kicked in yet. So if the changes are not being made, we might see even worsening of the global GDP growth. So the sooner you know we can stop altogether 
you know, uh, this Russian aggression, the more successful everybody will be going forward. Because if you look at every cent central bank in regulatory, uh, you look at the f federal fund uh, rates, what's happening, you look at Bank of England, what they're doing, you look at EU, which is coming, you know, back from negative rates. And the federal fund rate has the largest spike in, in many, many years. And there is uh, an, an additional spike is planned for, for the next year. So that means that, uh, and, and some of the greatest inflationary pressures are energy resources, again, and uh, uh, food security. And again, Russian war causes that. So the sooner we can solve that, everybody will benefit from that. It's mathematically, it's not only emotionally. And uh, why it's also profitable, because I think you hear from different angles, but basically the same statement that uh, right now, it, there are true fundamentals, principles and values on which you know proper collaborations can be formed uh, and uh, taking consideration that uh, I'm sorry for subjective statement but Ukrainian business showed tremendous resilience during turbulent times can you imagine uh, what success from joint ventures can be obtained when uh, you do this development during good times I mean I think the upsides can be tremendous and the en entry ticket right now is relatively small so you can reach much more IRR or future market capitalization if you enter right now and and you will require much less resources so I, I strongly believe that right now is uh, actually a very good time of course you have to select good partners as any uh, in any other market but I think uh, you have all the instruments, all the means to do this as of today. So today is definitely a good time uh, to do this. And as it was also stated, Ukraine is like a startup. And it's true because if you look at any segment of the economy, it's open field to act. So all the ingredients to move forward are right here. And, and we are from our side definitely ready to you know, make a good success together. Thanks. Thank you. And I want to give a floor to uh, our next speaker, who is Vladimir Reshetov. Uh, his company is the biggest seller of medical equipment in Ukraine. They basically work through the offline dealers, but also online, and uh, have about uh, 2 million uh, buyers on an annual basis, which is a number. Uh, they also have a medical clinic in Chernivtsi, which is basically the western part of the country. So, Vladimir, I want you, uh, I want to ask you also to share your experience. How is it to do business in medical sphere now? How is your business operating in Chernivtsi? Can you suggest to invest in Chernivtsi in medical sphere or any other uh, kind of sphere? Because um, there were a lot of talks that you know my, maybe it's a little bit risky to come to Ukraine now. How is Western Ukraine going on? Thank you for presentation. Uh, I will correct you. We have a marketplace. It is international marketplace. Uh, it is uh, the trading platform for medical equipment. And uh, we help our uh, 2 million uh, sellers and buyers all over the world. So we are located in Ukraine, but we're doing business also globally. Also, we have a medical center in Chernobyl, like Alina said, and uh, offline business of medical equipment. And the war changes the rules. The war changes uh, our focus. The war changed our plans. So we learned how to close projects, close projects very fast. Uh, we learned how to close even profitable projects because uh, we don't service Russian uh, clients. So we, we have a big audience uh, of Russian visitors in our marketplace. And uh, also we learned how to relocate families from the war zone to Chernivtsi. Uh, it's a um, city near Romania. And also mm, the market size uh, in medical equipment in Ukraine uh, was decreased in three times, but 
uh, it is not only um, market size. Um, so you um, could uh, imagine that uh, some people from other regions um, come to western part of Ukraine, so the market size uh, increased in 20%. Um, also, if you are in ID sector, I would recommend to use our special region uh, for ID sector. Uh, it's uh, zero um, income tax and 6.5% um, uh, salary tax. Uh, and uh, Whatever the circumstances, uh, I'm sure that we will win this war because Ukraine is about uh, free people. Uh, Ukraine is about freedom. Freedom is in our culture, in it's like our religion. Freedom allows us to produce wonderful, profitable projects. Thank you for attention. And glory to Ukraine. Vadim uh, Gurjus is our next speaker. Uh, they are working in the sphere of manufacturing foil eco-packaging for food. Also, one of the uh, biggest uh, production in this sphere. Um, Vadim, can you also share your experience? Um, how war affected you? How did you deal with crisis management? What are lessons learned? And what are your advices for investors who are thinking whether they should come to Ukraine or not? Um, I will tell you that I'm listening carefully all of, of my colleagues and partners to whom I know some of them more than 20 years. And I'll tell you that last 30 years we are continuously in crisis management. And uh, what I see the, here that all of us, we are very stress resistant, not only resistant, not only smart. Because uh, as I repeat again, within the last 30 years, uh, it was, it was many crises, minimum four economical crises, two revolutions, war from the 2014, and now it's one of the biggest invasion and war after the World Second. And we are still survive and even doing the business and profit. I tell you this short stories about this company, which is a representative today, Studio Park in Ukraine. Uh, when the, after the 24th of February, we are immediately united in company. Thanks to Sergey, we were coordinated from the SEO club. We were in contact with all of our colleagues and we started to help territorial defense and army. Honestly, for the first 10 days, two weeks, our government side was completely involved in different things, not to, to support this part of the Defense as a food, as a delivering, uh, supply, etc. Thanks to that, for the first two weeks, we move and uh, company, our, for example, our company, they never closed the door and even uh, we located between uh, that place, which is everybody right now knows, Bucha, European and uh, Kyiv. Combat zone was very close to us. We were forced to evacuate it from Kyiv. We gave for millions uh, support uh, this packaging to the volunteers and army. Then we were in the western part of the Ukraine. After that situation was stabilized, we immediately came back and started to produce our production, our uh, product uh, in uh, near Kyiv. And I will tell you honestly, still. Uh, successful and profitable even today. And thanks, first of all, to our colleagues and partners from Turkey who supported us very seriously. He is the one holding, very famous holding is Kibar, sends them. And uh, 
company Asan Aluminium, which is uh, inside of this uh, Kibar holding. They really help us and support it till today. And the, it's a short story of the company. And uh, I don't want to repeat what my colleagues told it, how we survive and how we live, how we do the business. And my main message that Ukrainian uh, partner and Ukrainian companies is very reliable. Uh, we are very stress resistant and uh, we have a plans. For example, with Andrea right now, we are talking about the, some project abroad in European Union. We are thinking and we do the project to expand in Ukraine. And if somebody interesting to the real to invest to the real sector of the economic, we are very open. Thank you very much. Many thanks. Um, in uh, his book, uh, Anti-Fragility, Nassim Taleb said that those who can actually go through the crisis will always uh, become stronger and become more flexible and more uh, creative. And they will definitely win the competition of the future. And I'm more than sure that uh, these gentlemen who uh, were speaking to you, who were sharing their experience, are uh, champions in anti-crisis management. And they are the examples of this anti-fragility. So if you are searching for partners in Ukraine, they are the ones. My recommendations. Uh, but really, as uh, Andris Desenko in the beginning of our panel said, if you're thinking about some business with Ukraine, if you're thinking about staying or coming with some new projects, this is exactly the time when you should start doing your research, when you should start looking for some sectors that might be interested, interesting, uh, when you should be starting uh, looking for some partners, including local partners, and also uh, looking for some, uh, for some money. In this uh, behalf, I just wanted to add a little bit on behalf of Ukrainian government that we are also working hard to create some additional opportunities for investors, both internal investors but also external investors. We are holding negotiations with two uh, huge American organizations who are providing um, investment insurance called uh, MIGA and DFC, Development Financial Corporation, uh, about military investment insurance. So basically, they will provide an insurance for force majeure, which um, um, abolishes any kind of risk and which uh, gives you an opportunity just to calculate the mathematics and see if Ukraine is interesting for you because other risks they will take. Um, as we mentioned earlier, there are great opportunities uh, to come to Ukraine and work in industrial parks. Uh, Ukrainian parliament just passed the legislation on that a couple weeks ago. And now basically industrial parks do have a lot of privileges in terms of taxation privileges, in terms of uh, some other uh, custom duties privileges and stuff like that. But in my opinion, the most uh, interesting thing will come when economic recovery, but also reconstruction of Ukraine will start. And those who are interested in that should already start doing research, finding contacts in government, finding contacts in the private sector, because the reconstruction is already uh, starting taking place. And in this regard, private-public partnership will be a very interesting and probably one of the key key tools. We know that Turkey experience, have great experience in PPP, building airports, building healthcare facilities and stuff like that. And we want to bring this experience to Ukraine. But we can also bring some Turkish partners to Ukraine. So think about it. Think about Ukraine as an opportunity. Think about Ukraine as a place to invest, to invest your money, but also your emotions and your time. Because this will be the best place to invest shortly. That's what we all hope for. Thank you for, the, for your attention and thanks to all my panelists for sharing their thoughts and opinions. Thanks. And thank you very much, Honorable Alina Yanchenko, for sharing most of the stage today with us. And uh, thank you, distinguished 
speakers. So we are coming towards the end of the day today. Um, we have another panel coming up. It's about digital business platform in Ukraine. And this will be our last panel of the day. And then afterwards, I want to remind everyone, uh, our speakers, sponsors, diplomatic and diplomatic people and ministers for the dinner cruise on the Bosphorus, which will be at 7.30 p.m. So next coming up will be acting director of the state institution, entrepreneurship and expert promotion office, Andriy Remizov. This presentation will cover the Ukraine DIIA business platform, which is a national online platform for entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship support centers all over the country. Is Mr. Andrew Remizov here? Ah, hello, sorry, online. Hello. So I leave you the stage, you're already on the stage. Uh, it's called uh, Dual Business uh, and uh, 